That's so brilliant. This video is sponsored by Case Filters. And that's quite interesting, I have to say. I mean, woodland photography is handled as the most difficult subgenre of landscape photography. But that's wrong. Actually, it's quite easy, I have to say. The easiest way is to go out for photography when there's fog, because that adds that through a woodland scene. And we get a better separation between all the elements. And we also get mood by that. But yeah, I mean, what if we don't have fog at all? Hi my friends, a very good morning. You know, I live in an area where we don't have all the often fog and if we have some, it's maybe just a tiny bit or so. So it's really tricky to get really strong woodland photographs. But with the time, I found a solution which makes me a little bit more flexible with the weather conditions. So I would say, let me show that to you. But first of all, yeah, we need a composition. So let's find one. Oh man, what a fantastic piece of woodland. <laughs> it is amazing. And I mean, yeah, I know this woodland already quite well. Like I'm here for photographing already yeah, for, for quite uh, many years. And I stumble already quite often over this tree here, which grows out here from the side, going up here above this water, which looks really fantastic. We have shadows down there. We have lights up there. And I really like that. Uh, I just never thought about yeah, a composition here. I never found one, to be honest. But today I want to change that. I want to take a photograph here. And before I will tell you a little bit more about the details, about the composition, about uh, the technical stuff and everything like that, let's find out what we want to have in Woodland actually. And that is mood, that is depth. And we want to be able to capture the entire tonality. That means we have, you know, we have dark areas, we have quite bright areas in Woodland. Uh, it's very often that we have really dark areas especially when we are here in the early morning when it's overcast, a little bit raining and so. And that's quite difficult um, because we can't make an HDR so we can't stitch photographs afterwards because we have always some moving elements in and uh, yeah, it's better or it's just the only way you do that is to take one shot. So again, we don't have any fog or mist or anything like that in the, in the distance. So it's, it's quite clear, but not completely what we have is the weather of today, this, this is a really important factor. We have soft atmosphere, atmospheric softness. And that is something um, that could be haze for, for Worcester photographs or so, we don't have that today. Or it could be quite high humidity, I think we have 86% or something like that. Everything above 80% uh, or so is fine. So from a technical side, I'm here at 65 millimeters ISO 640 and I'm at around about 1.3 seconds of an exposure time. And I have a circular polarizer on. This is really important in woodland because um, yeah, we want to, to get the glare down, we want to have uh, uh, the saturation, we want to get the saturation more out from the leaves, from the foliage. I mean, this is a conifer tree, but uh, it's, it's the same thing, obviously. We want to get the glare down here from the water. And so the only problem is with the circular polarizer, it also kills our atmospheric softness. And that is exactly what we want to have for getting depth into our photograph, for getting mood and so on. And uh, the solution here is, uh, believe it or believe it not, that all is given by a new filter I have here from Case. And that is quite amazing. It's a black mist filter. And I just have to put it on here like that. Um, it's magnetic as all the K KW uh, revolution filters. And what it does is, uh, we'll go a little bit more in detail later. It does all the three things I mentioned before. We get mood, we get depth, and we also bring also the highlights a little bit down so that we get uh, a little bit better away with the dynamic range. 
And I got uh, three strands of black mist filters here. Uh, this is the um, half. I have a quarter and also an eighth. And then I have also a white mist filter. And what I do is it's quite important. First of all, I take a shot without the filter. I did that already. And then I take a shot with, um, yeah, this is the, 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 the half, the half filter. Let's, let's do that. Then I change the filter. Let's put on the next one. Just to find out which strange I need. That's the next one. And it's really that easy. I don't have to screw around. It's really, um, I put the filter on, I take the shot, I put the filter off, I put the next filter on, and afterwards I just look which of the exposures I took works best because there are a couple of things it does. One more shot, by the way, which is stunning, really. I'm blown away by the second one. But let's anyway stick to the first one for a moment. Well, before I will tell you which mist filter I've used, let me quickly show you the raw files. This here is the shot without mist filter. I just had the polarizing filter on. And as you can see, all the atmospheric conditions got eliminated by the polarizer. I mean, that's the job of a polarizer, right? It should reduce glare. And this is why, especially the distance, looks also too sharp for me. There is no mood anymore. Now, just to demonstrate the effect, let me show you also the raw file with black mist filter. And this is the strongest filter, by the way. Let's put them side by side. I mean, it's not much because, yeah, it doesn't add fog or so. It just emphasizes what is already there. But we can anyway see that it takes a tiny bit of micro sharpness away, right? The image looks a little bit more dreamy by that. Again, it's just the raw file. We have to bring that all out in post-processing, of course. But we can definitely see that the black mist filter reduces, I would say it reduces the harshness of the image. Yeah, I think that nails it really. It reduces the harshness. And that is exactly what I want to have in woodland scenes. The shadows get a tiny bit softer and the highlights start a little bit to glow. Again, not much in this case, but it's anyway a difference. Yeah, we will have a look at the raw files of the other strands later, but first of all, let's have a look what happens if we use a black mist filter when the atmospheric softness, uh, when the atmospheric conditions are stronger, because again, it just emphasizes what is already there. And as I already mentioned, I got a second shot as well. Oh man, what a fantastic morning out here. It's amazing. And the thing is we have spring actually, and on some yeah, bushes or so, it's already a little bit of foliage up here as you can see here, but not everywhere. So we're still waiting here. We're still, we're always a little bit late here in the mountains. But yeah, anyway, it's so beautiful here. I'm not sure what we can find else here today. Oh yeah, this doesn't look bad. Let's have a look. A quite funny thing, by the way, I made a poll, I think a week ago or so here on YouTube, if the spring foliage got already out uh, in your location. And uh, then one, one wrote, I'm from uh, Australia and uh, autumn is uh, kicking in right now. And when we look around now, we have spring here, not in Australia, but everything is red. And this is the red beach and it, le uh, it, it loses its leaves short before the new foliage comes out. And I thought this may be a good idea to, to take a photograph here with, uh, with this nice uh, red beach here. 
and all that dead wood down here, it had such a fantastic story. And when I came around the corner here, I came from, from back there, I saw that there was a little bit of, um, yeah, it's, it wasn't really mist, it was more atmospheric softness, but with a tiny bit of breakthrough. Right? Breakthrough, this is that uh, when um, the humidity gets that high, that there comes already a tiny bit of, of, of mist out, but not really uh, extremely, just a tiny bit. And um, the thing is, I tried it without filter, I tried it with the black mist filter, and the difference is amazing. So as I already mentioned, it boosts what is already there. It's not a, a magic filter that adds anything that's not there, it just boosts, and that is such a big difference, such a big advantage. So from the compositional side, what I really like is we have uh, all these uh, baby beach trees, this army of baby trees uh, back there. We had the mist back there, up there. It's still a little bit of softness up there, not much, but a little bit. Uh, we have uh, the tree here, a dead wood, and I tried, and that was the complicated, uh, the tricky thing actually, to bring an order here into the lines here of, of all this dead wood, to bring, uh, to bring the, the relative view a little bit around, uh, to make it, that, that everything makes a little bit of sense in the composition. Oh yeah, I really like this image. And by the way, for the image type, I thought about not Indian summer, but Australian spring. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, it's really funny to shoot such a colorful image in spring, isn't it? However, it's crazy when we compare the raw files now. And this is the raw file of the final image. I used a black mist filter also for this one. Now, let's put the version without black mist filter left beside. Crazy, isn't it? For the first image, I decided on the half stop filter, which is the one with the biggest effect. And for the second one, I decided on the quarter stop filter, which has even less effect than for the first one. So you will see the black mist filter really just emphasizes what is already there. And the difference between half, quarter and fourth is just subtle and almost not recognizable with the compression here on YouTube, I guess. Yeah, it's not really possible to give a clear recommendation here when to use which strands. I can just recommend try it out yourself out in the field. It's also a good idea to make an exposure for each single strand, as I have seen already, as I have done before um, in the morning when I, I took the photographs. The filters are linked down in the description, by the way. Yeah, the quality is amazing, I have to say. It doesn't eat a significant amount of light or so, so it's really ideal for woodland photography yeah, where we have everything dark and so. I would even say yeah, it's a must filter for everyone who shoots woodlands. And yes, this video is sponsored by Case, but as always you know I'm anywhere allowed to say my honest opinion. A big thanks to Case just for that. Now before I will tell you how a black mist filter works from the technical side and what it does exactly, one thing maybe. What I absolutely like at case filters in general is the amount of magnetism. The filters sit tight on the lens, but I was anyway able to put the filters up and down with just one hand. And that although there was also a circular polarizer sitting underneath the mist filter, which was also magnetic. That is really super, super handy, I have to say. Okay, what does a black mist filter do exactly? Now, there are black particles in the class. This is the reason why it's called black mist filter, obviously. And these particles scatter light. It's the same effect like a haze in the air or something like that. But that darker areas get a tiny bit softer, highlights in stack, this nice glowing effect, and really bright objects get a tiny bit of, of a subtle halo around. And I think one of the most important effects for woodland photography is also it compresses the dynamic range in the highlights. So that means when there is light shining in, in an image, 
it takes it a tiny bit down, just the lights, not the shadows. So theoretically, we could do that also in post-processing afterwards, of course, with luminosity masks. But practically, that doesn't work because again, we can't make an HDI in woodland. We can't stitch woodland photos as they are always leaves moving or so. And the white mist filter, by the way, works almost equally. The only difference is that it doesn't take the highlights down. Or in other words, there is no compression in the dynamic range as it is for the black mist filter. So if I come away with the dynamic range of my camera, I can use the white mist filter. And if I want to compress the dynamic range instead, I use the black mist filter. Which strands? Depends on the scene and also on the personal taste, of course. Again, the filters are linked down in the description and in case you are not using the KW Revolution system already, watch this video here next where I introduce all the advantages. My friends, I hope you liked this video. If yes, share it with your friends. I thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.